Hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your Daily T.A. Wrap, where we take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective and ask ourselves what happened today and what does it tell us about tomorrow. I do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of a wet and rainy Rocky Mountain. Slowly turning the weather, just like the markets. It's football season, folks. The market's uh, jamming higher, wants to push higher, continues to push higher. Anyone fighting it, oh man, that's a bad situation to be in. If we take a look at it here, we talked about the announcement last night in the Dow. We're going to kick out the weak ones, pull in the strong ones. Well, guess what? Dow goes skyrocketing as a result of it. We get the Dow up 135 points, leading everything, all right? Arbitrar sure is just front running what's going to take place. 135 up, 15,326. But that news was overshadowed by Apple today, where you got lots of downgrades and the Apple bit to the core all the way down, right? Chewed them up. Apple goes down 26, almost $27, 5.5%. Right back where Mr. Icon tweeted his famous tweet. Well, his billions were taken away today, but he also tweeted back today, or I don't know if he tweeted it or not, but he said that you'd have to be brain dead not to buy Apple. Well, right now you'd almost have to be brain dead to buy it. You just broke the big bar up off his tweet with more volume and you closed under it. I don't think that's a good thing. Back to the markets, SPX up five, one, six, eight, nine. It's doing the last retest regen that's up there before it makes new highs. We had the composite slightly down four points, three, 37.25, NDX down five. If you were to told me Apple's gonna drop five and a half percent and it's 22% weighting, I don't think I could have told you it'd only be down 0.16 of a percent. 3179.86 was the close. Russell, so I was basically flat, 1055 and a third. Gold was uh, down, actually gold was pretty flat today. Silver is, is the same. Uh, the dollar was the one that was down 30 of a percent. Uh, we had bonds actually shoot up at the end of the day and uh, you know, um, gold, I mean, uh, oil, uh, copper, they were both up. Uh, nothing huge. Copper was up a decent amount. So that's what the indexes look like. Let's go take a look at the charts, as we always do, to see what's happening. You know, we've been talking about, you know, how we read these tapes and how we saw that big turn here that made us get long. Well, it's a good thing we did because it just keeps going higher. The target initially was this big bar, the bar breakdown, the zone that it created back up to the swing point high. That was a retest, a bearish retest, regenerate. Went just blowing right past it. Now it's into the next one. The top of that one's 8, 1691.85. We close at 1689. We're gonna attack that one in the morning and try to blow it away and then also go take out a swing point. Volume here, 30 million, 30 point, 30 point two it looked like, 27.6 here. We're doing 31 on the way. So we're actually doing more volume as we come up, even after we've had a nice run. This, is, this started at 1630, folks. We're at 1690 now. At 60 points, that's 3% straight up again. I've seen this so many times. I see it in my sleep anymore. Another straight up run. That's going to try to pop the top before it's over. Seven days up, though, you might get a little pullback in here somewhere. I thought you'd get it today. I did think we'd see the NDX underperform today, and I had no idea Apple was going to be down this big. Uh, but it wasn't a, a huge underperformance, a slight one. It filled the gap, you know, a gap down to start. A little doji yesterday proved to be true. But you know, it didn't stop it very far. And actually, I want to go back to the SPX right quick and look at the weekly. There's another key point here on your weekly. If you look at it, you're back above your swing point high. Remember, this was a retest regen. We got under one bar. 
you don't want to stay you don't want to stay under more than one or two bars you got under one bar you're back over to the next bar now you're back at the top of it this is retesting regenerating higher on the weekly on the intermediate term time frame if we go to the Dow let's look at the Dow right quick the Dow was going after that big bar we looked at last night I think it actually got to it top of that wide price spread bar 15,332 we got to 15,326 almost going to hit it tomorrow we'll see what it does with it the only thing after that is to go test its swing point lows uh, and that low is 15405 so not that much farther another 70 points this front running is you know it's a game they play and you know if you know the index is going to get stronger well you front run the index knowing that it's coming so and that's what they're doing of course They've done most of what they're going to do already. I, you know, I don't know what those numbers look like, but I suspect that they've plugged them all in already. You know, computerized it, and, and they're going to run this thing as far as they can until there's nothing left to run, and then they'll back off again. So the weaker index becomes the stronger index as they rejigger it. All right? If you can't, if if you can't go up, just rejigger it and make it go up. It's a beautiful. A beautiful situation if you're in control of that. Let's look at the broad NASDAQ here. Okay, so on the broad NASDAQ, what do we do here? We had a little doji up there almost as well. We, we gap down, we come down, and this actually did a retest regen already. 36.94. And yeah, we went uh, 37.04. That's 30. No, we didn't get to it. Well, sure looks like it. I guess my eyes are getting all. I guess those H's on top, the swing point highs, is fooling me. So no retest regenerate here. Let me see if we got it on the NASDAQ. I mean on the NDX right quick. Go back to that chart. So that high, 147, 149. We got as low as 159. We didn't even get it there. That's just a testament to the, the strength of this move. You got... You got 20% of your weighting and you can't even take this thing down and that was with the socks down as well that tells you other things were moving so on the IXC you come down you fill the little gap that was there off the breakout bar that was 36.75 excuse me 37.29 we got to 37.04 yeah so we easily filled that gap no volume coming back that looks fine. That thing can go higher. So they, the indexes still all look like they can go higher. Let's look at the Russell right quick. See what it looks like. Okay, so the Russell, that's a little interesting one there. So it's a little doji into resistance. 1055.76. We close at 1055.34. That's an over, under, two bar reversal after um, a pretty extended move. So that, that actually looks like that one's going to hesitate. The swing point high was 54. And you closed over it though. So you got over the swing point high. Actually, you got over it yesterday. Yeah, so I, 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 it looks like the Russell is probably going to try to trade sideways to down, but the other indexes all look like they want to go higher. So if, if most of your indexes want to go higher, then the guy that looks a little weak, he'll just probably just hesitate. Um, let's go look at the let's go look at the sectors and see if they're telling the same story. Because what you're wanting to look for after you get the move that you expect is you want to look and see when to turn, right? Or at least when to get safer again. Um, you know, you you know the markets can only go so far, and then they'll pause and and that sort of thing. So you're you're always trying to say, okay, what's the projection? Where can it project to? Where's it going to get to? Well, it looks like those stronger indexes didn't give much up, even despite Apple today. They just kind of ignored Apple. Yeah, it kept, held them back, but but you didn't get any pin action off of it, right? Nobody else went down. It was just Apple. So as a result of that, you know, and you had some chips, some weakness in some of the chips that were tied to Apple. So if you can't bring it down on the big on the big gun you know then the next question is okay how far can they go uh, we'd already projected up uh, probably to the highs on the SPX before this is done it looks like it's going to be 
going up there a lot quicker than we expected. We actually, I actually expected a little pause today. It didn't happen. When these markets get moving, they don't like to pause. So let's see if the sectors give us anything that we can look at to tell us that we're going to get some sort of a turn because they're, they're the ones that will probably give it to us, not the indexes. Okay, so the IYT, the transports, um, that still looks that still looks okay. A little doji today at the top end of resistance. That one, that one probably trades sideways as well. It, it's still going to try to get to the top though uh, before it's over. And this is our semiconductors, and you can see they just kind of went sideways today. And that was actually an inside bar, 39.58. Yeah, inside bar with more volume. So this thing's just raring to break. Uh, it's going to pop the top, it looks like to me. XLB, let's see what this one looks like. Okay, so the XLB is over the highs. It was yesterday, continues on today, stretches farther. So that sector is looking good. XLE broke out today. Remember the XLE had multiple numbers. Remember we were talking about this the last couple days. Is we got swing point highs, multiple swing point highs on single time frames on most cases. XLE is a little different. XLE has it on multiple time frames. You got it over here on a swing point, and that's on a weekly. And then you got three of them, excuse me, uh, two of them you just broke on the daily. Let's do the ABCDs here. So this price point is 76.02. So roughly 76.84. That's uh, eight points onto this one. What does that give us? 87, almost 89. So 89. And you got an ABCD going over here as well. That one's already played out. So it's a new one starting, and that one played out. So it's a new one from here, and you don't have you don't have a B point yet. Okay, so this one's over the highs. So if I just take range here, that gives me about 80 to 84. I double that, it gives me about 88. We projected 89 on the weekly. Uh, so so now you can start making some conclusions. Uh, that looks like uh, about 88 to 89 is where that one's going to try to get. Let me go back to the XLB. What kind of structure do we have here? So we have... Okay, so the ABCD is already played out here and a new one's just started. Let's see on the weekly. So on the weekly we have one. 38 to 41. That's roughly 3 and 44.57 so another two and a half that's another uh, what is that four or five percent uh, these these are pretty big numbers actually so XLE XLB both look like they have some pretty good room to run let's look at the financials now the financials still stuck at resistance So the bar they're playing with still is here, which is a gap down bar, and but they're hanging. And you got an A B C D up here that just completed as well. A B C that's a completion. So I would think you get more hang on the financials before they can run up. Maybe you come back and fill your little gap. Maybe do the retest regen on that swing point high it just broke. So two of them look very strong. The other three, so-so. Here's another one that broke out multiple swing points. Let's see what kind of structure we got on the weekly here. And you got an ABCD up now. If this closes over the highs, you'll have an ABCD up here. A points 41, B points 46, that's five onto this one, gets you about 49. We're at 46, that's three bucks on 46. That'll get you a, that'll get you about a, what, 7% or something, 6%? I don't know, it's a fairly good number too. So we've got some fairly, we've got three 
Now let me think about these sectors. XLB is not that large weighting. XLE is. XLI is sorta. Of. So you've got probably, that's I'd have to get the weightings out, but I think you probably got about 40% of your market trying to go up on the SPX with strong moves. XLK. Actually, it's probably not that much. Probably about 35 with those three. 35, yeah, it's probably 40. It's probably close to 40. Um, yeah, XLK, it's not really telling me anything other than the fact that it didn't, you know, it came down with volume given Apple, but uh, hang, hung in there pretty well. Here's the XLP. It actually got over swing point high here. So the XLP is going to change the sideways. So even the weak sector is getting a little boost. XLU had huge volume today. I don't know what was going on with it. Um, it was down big. It's like somebody just blew a bunch of stuff out. You know, they, they got sick of it, I guess. I don't know what that is. Um, anyway, I wouldn't be messing in those sectors right now. Uh, XLV, they, they, ne they never even finished off their ABCDs down. XLV... Now this guy's going for the highs. He's got a swing point high. It's attacking now. At top is 51.23. We're trading at 51.21 high. It's going to try to take out the swing point high. So if it takes out two, it probably gets some juice. And it's getting a little bit of a boost on the way up in terms of volume. That high has uh, 8.7. And we're doing 6.7. So when we get up there, we'll have to see if the buyers really come or not. And the last one's discretionary. So I see, I see three very strong sectors out of the nine. And this one's not doing bad, gonna go after the highs too. So you got three strong ones, two, two okay ones, you know, in terms of pushing up and gonna to try to continue up. You got two that are kind of weak that are hanging, XLP, XLU. XLF uh, the same and XLK. So you got four of them that are kind of sideways. So starting to get, you know, a little bit, but, but the strong ones are the SPX. And so the SPX, if we go back to it real quick, so given, given you know, a look at that, that SPX is probably going to try to push to, the, to a higher, you know, take out that retest region on the bear side, get rid of that, and then probably push up and try to get into um, those highs. It's not that far away. Let me see how many points it's away here. You know, let me see if there's a structure. So this never gave us an ABCD the way it played out. That top is 1709. We're trading at 1689. So it's 30, 30 points away. No, 20 points away. Not that far. One, one good day. So, okay. Let me look quickly at the ox markets. I see a couple questions over here. I'll try to get to those. If you've got questions, pop them in. And folks, the world markets are doing the same thing. I could, if I have time, I'll pop through a few of them, but uh, they're all pushing too. Uh, you got new highs in a couple of Europeans. You got new highs uh, in a number of other uh, stocks, I mean, uh, indexes across the world. Um, you know, it's not just here, it's, it's right around the world. And it all started, you know, as I told you the last Sunday, it all, not this past one, the previous one, it all started with that Chinese news on the PMI, flash PMI, that Saturday a week and a half ago. And from there, we got all the other PMIs, the ones while we were on Labor Day weekend, and then ours when we came back, and all of them were showing better economic activity across the world. And that is what's driving this, right? I mean, that's why, you know, the players are back. They, they're, out, they're out of the Hamptons now, right? They're coming back to play, and they're putting money back to work. They think the market's going to have another run. Now, right or wrong, that's what they're doing. Um, you know, I don't try to figure out if they're right or wrong. I just try to figure out what they're doing and when they change their minds, right? That's what supply and demand tape reading is all about, right? Figure out where they're going and go with them. All right, let's look at the TLT because the bonds today had a big reversal. Bonds had been trying to push down. Remember, they had a little ABCD started down yesterday, which would have blew out the bottom if it, it continued. Uh, they blow right back the other way today, leave a hammer, right? They're testing into the lows, 
right? They didn't get to the low, but they're testing into that low, and they said there are no sellers down here. You had a bond auction at one o'clock Eastern time today. That was when these guys flipped around. Let's let's look at it on the chart. I'm pretty sure that was when they flipped around. If I go to the TLT, put it on an intraday one day, because they had a big reversal right here. Yeah, right there, 11 o'clock, right? Bond auction. Hello, up, nice big. You know, a classical guy would look at this and say, you know, you got a, what do you, what do you call this? The, uh, the cup and handle thing, right? 102, top of it's 103, that's a point away. So that's, that should take you, given those measurements, the old measurements I used to do, that's 80 cents, that gets you to 104. If you, if you go back 104, what does that do for you on a neoclassical? It doesn't do anything. This thing's going to 105. Oh, take it back. That is 104. So it's going right after that bar. So 104 is the target, both in the classical and the neoclassical, right? That's where it's going to try to get. Now, what you'll do in neoclassical that you won't do in classical is you'll say, okay, what kind of resistance you're going to have there, right? And that's going to be that swing point low again. It's already been retested, regenerated. So what we'll want to do is look at this and see what kind of volume it has when it gets there. Right, that will be the key. It's this white price spread, high volume var the first time we came off the bottom. If this holds, now the classical guys are gonna say, oh, a series of higher highs, higher lows, right? Of course, if you can get a higher high. And that's a change of trend in their perspective. Well, the change of trend for us will happen a lot sooner than that, if it does, probably, but uh, that's neither here nor there. We're just trying to put in the bottom right now. I think you're gonna see these things work higher. If they do, that's more fuel for the for the uh, equity markets. Why? Because if this thing were to blow out the bottom, the equity markets were going to have a hard time, right? You don't want to see this thing just start, you know, skyrocketing and not skyrocketing, but you know, falling like a like it's coming off a cliff, uh, because then your your interest rates are going to push up too fast. Too you know, anything fast in bonds and currencies is bad, up or down, and. Uh, you know, and this has been a fast move. This has not been a slow move if you look at the bonds. That move, 25%, four months, that's a big move. That's not small. All right, let's, um, uh, I don't have much to say about the other things. Dollar was down, doesn't really mean anything. Um, the only other thing I would look at real quick here is the junk bonds. Junk bonds are trying to push back and get a swing point high. That would be a big uh, feather in their cap for the equity markets as well if this does that so let's keep an eye on that all right let's go to the questions here and then if I have any more time I'll do a couple more things LA can you tell me how resistance looks on the weekly chart for NOV now NOV is a stock I know that we've looked at before I don't remember if it was you Tommy but if it was it's fine we'll look at it again let's see what it looks like so what I got here I got NOV I got two or three questions, so let me throw in the other symbols while I'm doing it, and then we'll take a look at all of them together. So we'll start with NOV. NOV is oil, and uh, this is Oil Services, National Oil Well. Okay, so a nice big five, you know, spike on the on the daily. It looks like it just finished up, more than finished up in ABCD, twice over actually. Let's go look at the weekly, what you're interested in. So you're coming into your resistance zone. You're coming into a big wide price spread, high volume bar. That low is eight, excuse me, uh, 79.92, not quite 80. You hit 79.14 today. It's going to be a brick wall. It ain't going to get over it. You, you're, I, I doubt seriously that you'll get past that bar and if you do that one's going to kill you so the october 22nd bar and the september 17th bar of last year that little area is going to be deadly for this this position let's see the abcd up is small it's already completed it you got another one it's already completed that one there's nothing there's nothing here to drive it in my opinion so if you want to get in this, then you want to you want to wait for your retrace. If you're already in it, you might consider taking some some of it off, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent, whatever your portfolio looks like, and try to buy it back cheaper. You popped over, you did, you, you know, I don't know if you noticed or not. You piped over, you popped over multiple swing points here 
both here and on a weekly, that is why you get the fast move higher. Those fast moves, as I've told you before, they usually last. Right? We got we got a break on the we got a break on the daily. We got a break on the weekly. Okay? When you do that, you get a fast move for how many bars? Two to three bars. What is this? Bar two. So you're probably getting the extent of what you're going to get there, and then you'll probably see this thing come back. So I would I would be looking to buy the retrace, uh, and I'd probably be looking for a place to take some of my profits, especially with this bar I see today. Okay, let's look at the next one, TKR. Now, one more quick thing while I'm here. Let's see what this all services look like. Because they had broken out over multiple swing points. And, yeah, they're about done too. So you got the same thing. Okay, so that still looks the same. Doesn't change my opinion. TKR, let's see what this one is. All right, TKR is... Tinkin Company, the Tinkin Company. I think these guys do industrials, if I remember right. But uh, I can't, I'm not Kramer, I can't remember every stock like he does. So what are we doing? We're, oh, we broke over three swing points here. Nice. And it's only on one time frame though. It's not on the weekly as well. Okay, so you can get a push. You got a nice push. Okay, so the, the deal here, and we're going to do something a little different than we normally do here tonight. And that is is that we're going to uh, pop over here, go to our tools, pull up the cube, because I want to see what um, TKR. I want to see what the cube looks like for this guy. And what I'm interested in, he how extended he is. So it's 81 and 70. So he's fairly extended, right? It is industrials. My lord, I actually remember something. Machine and tools. Okay, they got no revenue, no earnings. That's nice. Beta is 195. They got no short interest. Okay, so now going back to the chart, I think what you, I think what you want to do is be careful here. And what I would do is I'd probably try to take some profits on the top of this bar unless it gets over it. If it, if it can get over it and start running, that's fine. But you've got a stock that's moved a lot already. Now it had a nice base here. It got over it. But what I'd try to do is potentially sell a little bit up here and then try to get it again because you got two things working against you. One is that's a huge bar to get over now. And if it gets over it, that's fine. But if it doesn't, it gets up there and stalls again, then you want to take a little money off and you want to buy it on the next retrace because it probably will come right back down in this support zone one more time. Uh, so Spring Moon says, how do the sectors that you go over relate to the individual stocks that I trade. How do I apply it? The individual stocks that I select may not move the same way the sectors do. Well, um, okay, I guess that's a fair question. You know, stocks move sectors, sectors move the markets, right? So when I when I look at sectors, I'm not looking at the sectors as much to say, okay, this is going to move all the stocks in that uh, that sector, because that's not the way it works, right? That sector is larger than just one or two stocks, and and so yeah, that's that's not exactly what happens. But if you go pick up this book, if you don't have it yet, go pick up this book and look at the relationships. The first, very first chapter. This book laid out the model. This book actually put the data behind the model because it wouldn't fit all in this book. In here, you'll see in the first chapter the relationship between sectors and stocks and, and sectors and markets. And that relationship is fairly strong. And so if the market's strong and if a particular sector is strong, then you're going to get the majority of those stocks in that sector move with you. And I could give you a quick demonstration of that probably um, on the fly here is if you go in here, products, tools, go down to the sectors. And if I pull up, um, let's pull up a strong sector like uh, say the, uh, let's say the XLK has been pretty strong. Okay. If I pull up the XLK and I get all the stocks in the XLK, right? And if I sort them on the short term, I can see most of them are, are bullish. Right, there's some sideways ones, a whole bunch of confirmed bullish ones, and you got a few bearish ones. You can see exactly what I talk about in that book, and that is, is that most of the stocks 
are going up because the sector's going up. So I would argue that yes, they do go up along with what you see in maybe your particular stocks aren't. And if they're not, I wouldn't be in those stocks, right? If your stocks aren't moving up right now, I don't think I'd be in those stocks. I would be finding ones that are moving because you want to be with the strong. You don't want to be with the weak. And so, you know, not to try to sidetrack this question or anything, you know, the point is, is that you want a way of finding the best stocks. And a matter of fact, I'm not going to try to sell my system, but, you know, if you come in here, you get trading signals every day. It gives you the strongest stocks that are out there. Um, you got sector trends you can work across. You can scan for them. There's all kinds of stuff to find them. What you want to do is find the strongest ones and stay with them. One of the strongest ones out there, I've been telling members for a long time, I've been trying to get it in the portfolio. The portfolio is a little handicapped because I can't buy intraday in it. But I've been telling members for I don't know how long that they got to get into Facebook. I mean, this stock is a strong stock. And if you're not into Facebook, you should have been in it. And I've told members that are trading intraday that they should get in it. I got in it way back here when it broke, right? You could tell it was going to happen, and it's like a straight-up move. That's a strong stock. That's where you want to be. You want to be in what, where the strength is. And if you're not in the strength in an up market, boy, you sure as heck don't want to stay in those guys when the market turns uh, because they're the ones that are going to lead you back down. So, um, DLR, I'll take a quick look here. I got I got to run, folks. So let's see what DLR looks like. Let's see what it looks like real quick. Dollar General, no, Digital Realty. Oh, um, nah, I don't know about this one, guys. Um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be messing with this. This is this is you know again we're in a strong market. Don't mess with this stuff. You know. If, when it breaks swing point highs, gets over this bar, breaks these highs, yeah, you can think about it. All right? Then you can run up to here. But until it does it, forget it. Just monitor it. Folks, have yourself a great night. I appreciate you being there. You tell a friend, tell two. I'm Ellie Little. This is and was your daily TA wrap. Have a great one. I'll actually turn some mu music on on the way out. I forgot it on the way in. Take care, folks. Good night.